Good morning or good afternoon, pre-calculus classes. Reminder, you have a quiz due. Right here, it says... Right here. Quiz 5-2. It was a take-home quiz. given to you either in class or you could find it in its learning. It's due today, actually, but uh, you can turn it in before you leave class today. Today, we're going to lecture Law of Signs. Law of Signs is used to solve triangles. You're thinking, we've been doing that. But it's solve any triangle. Any triangle that is not a right triangle. So that's good news for you, because you were wondering, when was that going to occur? Okay, pre-calculus honors, how are we doing? So far in this quarter that we've had one lesson, we've done the law of signs, which I wrote, solve any triangle. That's not exactly true. But in your perspective, it was pretty much solving all kinds of triangles that we didn't have before. What I really should have said here was solve triangles that were not right triangles. And that's what we did with uh, this law of signs. Let me write that here. We actually solved non right triangles. It's kind of amazing we could find sides of a triangle that we could not use Pythagorean theorem for. Well, we're going to move on to another tool in your tool belt, law of cosines. Well, of course, if we had law of sines, maybe there's a law of cosines. And so it actually is a very short lesson because there's only so much you can do, but it's pretty detailed. So buckle up, let's go for a ride. And... I'm going to put uh, solve triangles because now with the law of sines and the law of cosines, we really aren't restricted anymore. If you look at that picture and remind you that when you see pictures, they're never to scale. For all you know, this could be a right angle. It's just drawn kind of bad. But if I told you it's a right angle, you have to take my word for it and run with it. But I'm not going to tell you that it is a right angle because at this point, I don't know what the angles are and I don't know what the sides are. They're all labeled A, B, and C, small A, B, and C for the sides and capital A, B, and C stand for angles. And let me share with something, share with you something you've seen before. You've seen this before. A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. Wow. Mind-blowing, right? Not really. You should recognize that as Pythagorean theorem. But uh, there was a a commentator many, many years ago, who's died many, many years ago, he would always start out with a story of something and say, at the end, because you don't know what he's talking about until the very end, he'll say, now you know the rest of the story. You should look it up, Paul Harvey. Very good, uh, gives like three-minute talks on the radio. and well, You're going to know the rest of the story. 
of Pythagorean theorem. But I'm not going to write it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared right now. I'm going to write this. That for any triangle, any triangle, looking at that picture here, I'm going to write to you that c squared, I'm writing it the other way around, is equal to a squared plus b squared. But since I do not know that it's a right triangle, I have to add one more uh, piece to the this formula because I'm not guaranteed that I have a right angle. I don't know if A and B are just legs and that really is a right angle. I don't know that. So to take into account the possibility that it is not 90 degrees, I have to subtract from this two times the same two sides that I thought could be legs. A, B, and here's where the cosine comes in. Cosine of C. So take a look at what we just have. We've got three sides of the triangle. And uh, the side that that I was pretending that, uh, well, it doesn't really matter what side. I got one side equals to, one side squared is always equals to the other two sides squared added together. But then I have to subtract from that two of the exact same two sides that I have on the right-hand side. 2 times the A times the B, but I need to multiply by the cosine of the angle that's between the sides A and B. So in this case, A and B are here. So my angle that's sandwiched in between is angle C. So it's kind of like, in this case, pretending that maybe... Maybe, 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 maybe C could have been the right angle. Maybe. But it has nothing to do with right angles. I'm just saying this to give you a perspective. That this is called an included angle. It's included between two sides. It's included between two sides. In other words, what am I looking at here? I'm looking at an angle side, uh, side angle side. That's what I'm looking at. So this formula works out really, really well because I can literally find the other side that I don't have that's across the street from the angle that I, I have in my included in these, this diagram. But I'm not limited to just that picture. I can pick any side and, and leave it on the outside. I could say A squared. Well, A squared is here. There's A. That meant capital A is the included angle. So they go together. So... In my formula, I would say A squared would equal to the other two sides, B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of capital A. Because small a and capital A would have to be connected in a sense that if I'm solving for A side A and it's A squared, then I need the cosine of A over here. And we're not done. You probably figured it out that I could write B squared would equal to the other two sides, A squared plus B squared minus 2A. I already did this one. 
why did I do wrong? Oh, <laughs> a squared plus the c squared. <laughs> the other two sides that I didn't have. There, that, it didn't look funny. Uh, 2ac cosine of the angle that's across from the side that is isolated on the equal sign. That would be a capital B. Now, just for kicks for 30 seconds of your life, what if that was a right angle, but you don't know it? Look what would happen here. Look what would happen here. I would say the opposite side from the included angle is the C. So I would say C squared would have to equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, A squared plus B squared, minus 2AB cosine of C. Well, if C was actually 90 degrees, look what happens. If angle C was equal to 90 degrees, then C squared equals to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of 90 degrees. Well, what is cosine of 90 degrees? I don't know. I can't do it in a triangle, so I have to do it on the unit circle. 90 degrees is when the angle opens up to here, and I have that ordered pair. And if you're on the unit circle, that ordered pair would be 0, 1. And remember what I taught you about the unit circle? That whenever we're doing with any of these points that are on the, the fence, the first number is the x, the second number is the y, and when you're on the unit circle, in other words, that the radius is always a 1, the first number x is the cosine of the theta that I'm looking at, and the second number y is the sine of theta. Since I want cosine of 90, and 90 goes all the way up to here, Cosine of 90 is da, 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 0. So if angle C was 90 degrees, then C squared equals to A squared plus B squared minus 0. Well, what it is, because 2 times A times B times 0 will still be 0. Da, da. Pythagorean theorem, if the included angle was 90. If, 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 if. And as Paul Harvey used to say, now you know the rest of the story. Okay, let's try to make this work. I don't have to do too many of them for you to get the idea. Matter of fact, I could just do two or three and I'm done. You can just finish the rest on your own. And I can provide you some answers uh, in there. But number one, I do not have a right triangle. <laughs> I know that for a fact. A right triangle cannot have an obtuse angle. And this angle is huge. It's huge. It's bigger than 90. So we call that obtuse. Since this is called an acute I used to think that we would call this one an uh, ugly. If this was acute, oh, it's so cute. It's an acute angle. I used to think that meant the teacher said it's, it's, it's pretty, like it's cute. That must mean this obtuse must be uh, ugly. Da-da. There's my joke for the day. I'm sure you're just doing a kick out of that. All right, back to business. This is acute and this is obtuse. But anyway, since that's the angle that I have, I'm not guaranteed I have every angle, but you need to have uh, hopefully 
we have an angle. If not, then I could have all three sides. That'll work too. We could find the, an angle. But anyway, I want you to take a second and realize that that obtuse angle pairs up with the X. It's very important to know what's the pair. So when I write this out, I don't care what you call the sides, A, B, Z, I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this. This is the side that's opposite of the included angle. So x squared must be equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. 16 squared plus 28 squared. That's this one and this one. Minus 2 times those two sides, the exact two sides that are with you on that side. 2 times the 16 times the 28. From that, or with that, 2 of 16 times 20, cosine multiplied by cosine of the included angle, which was 127 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. All right, so... It's just a matter of you adding all those numbers, whatever that gives you. And again, I'm not going to go and jump to my calculator. I'm not in the classroom, so I can't ask you to key it in. So I'll give you a second to key it in. Okay, once you have that number, 16 squared plus 28 squared minus, be careful, this goes together, this goes together. So maybe if you want to be, make sure you don't make a mistake, after you do the minus, put a parenthesis and put the 2 times the 16 times the 28 times the cosine of 127 degrees in your calculator, and you're going to get some number. Well, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the side that's missing is x. You know, ever see that problem when the, the teacher says, okay, guys, find X, and the student thinks they're really smart, and they go right here. Found it. There it is. Missing. <laughs> anyway, another joke. I can't believe I'm just rolling these out this morning. Uh, square root, both sides. X is, I only need the positive answer. Whatever the positive answer of the square root of that number that you had up there. So what do I need to see on your paper? For sure, for sure, I need to see this line always. That's called your setup. Then I need to see where you literally say x squared is this number. Then I need to see you say x equals... Now, do your nearest tenth after you do the square root. Don't do the nearest tenth when you add those up. That number, you should have more than one decimal. I'm going to ask you to write three decimals until you do the last step. Then you do the one decimal. That way you're keeping enough precision that you'll round correctly. Let's do another one because that was so much fun. Look at the problem. Look at the sandwich. Here it is. There's the... Uh, the sandwich is this piece of meat in between these two slices of bread. That's called my included angle. It needs to have the opposite side. So let's see how we're going to work this one out. I'm going to write uh, x squared. It's on the side that's across from the angle that I have will equal to the Sum of the squares are the other two sides. Uh, 12 squared plus 25 squared minus, always minus. Minus what? I'll put in parentheses so you don't get lost. 2 times the 12 times the 25 times, one more thing, cosine of 
the angle that's included in this case was 36 degrees. That needs to be on your paper. That's your work. The next work would be do all the math. Do all of this and feel free to use your calculator. X squared equals something. Record on the paper three decimals for, for now. You could record more if you want, but, you know, don't... You don't have to uh, go out of your way to make me proud of you. You can just leave the three decimals and I'm still proud of you. I'll give you a second. If that wasn't enough time, you could always pause. You have a number. We now take the square root both sides. So x will be whatever the square root of that number is with one decimal. And why am I using one decimal? Not because it's holy or anything. The author said nearest tenth. That's one decimal. Number three. Let's see. This time there's no, pic no picture. You're on your own. Draw your picture. Just draw a picture. Label A, B, C. This is side C. This is side B. This is side A. Put the values that. So I, I would require as your work, you can't do this without looking at a picture. If your picture does not get written, then you didn't do it, okay? Let's be honest. If you did not put your picture down, then you put no thought into it, and I'm assuming you didn't really do it, okay? So, uh, let's see. He says the measure of angle C is 88. So let me put that right here. 88 degrees. AC would be the 22 feet. That would be side B right here. 22 feet. BC is 11.5 feet. 11.5 feet. Now that is side B. I just wrote over the letter B. It's okay. They won't get mad at me. 11.5 feet. Find the missing side AB. Okay. So we're looking for this side. Which... I can call it C. The above problem called it X. Okay? I'm going to leave the letters. Here it goes. I'm looking for side C. So it makes sense to say C squared equals to the other two legs squared. That would be 22 squared plus the 11.5 squared minus 2 times, let me put my parenthesis there, minus 2 times 22 times 11.5 times one more thing. Wouldn't be the law of cosines without writing cosine of the included angle that I have, which was angle C, Angle C had to be between these two legs, which was A and B. So there it is. The angle is 88 degrees. Again, this is no different than the one we just did above, but there's a little more requirements. I need to see a picture. It needs to match up with what I just did for my law of cosines. Okay. Pause the video if you wish to finish calculating that C squared is some number. Because all you did is keyed in. 
22 squared in your calculator plus 11.5 squared minus parentheses. 2 times 22 times 11.5 times cosine of 88 degrees. Bingo, bango, there's your number. Take the magic square root to both sides. C is whatever that becomes. But there's one more requirement. All my sides were labeled in feet, so I better put feet or you will lose a point. Now, here is what about a missing angle? Because look what I'm looking at. All of these problems were side angle, side triangles. I knew an, an angle between two sides. Finally, finally, you couldn't do this before. This is like, you should be so excited. I can now find side, side, side. I can use side, side, side and find an angle. I can find any angle I want. Find each angle measure. Well, we're only looking for angle X. We're looking for angle X. X degrees. Route on the answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, here it goes. Now, X angle goes with the side 10 millimeters. These go together. They need to be positioned correctly in your law of cosines to get the answer correct. The side across from the included angle, this is still called an included angle, has to be the number I have outside, 10 squared, equals to the other two legs, 13 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 13 times 11 times the cosine of x. I don't know the angle. Bummer. Now, I'm going to do some of this in my head. This one, I'm going to show you how, you know, you're going to be so amazed that without a calculator, I can do some of this. Let's see. 10 squared, uh, 100. Equals to 13 squared, I think, was 169. Ah, oh, he's so smart. 11 squared was 121. Ah, oh, minus. Now, this is what's going to be amazing to you. Watch this, watch this. 2 times 13 is 26. Ah, times 11. Oh, I can't do that in my head. Cosine of x. But I, I don't need a calculator. I got the power of 26 times 11. And if I could remember my number sense, I always know there's repeated numbers because 26 times 1 is 26, and 26 times 1 is 26. So it's really 26 and 26 shifted over. Wow, it's amazing. But anyway, 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. Oh, there it is. And then I shift, put a 0 there. 1 times 6 is 6. And 1 times 2 is 2. Ah, oh, there it is. That answer is 2, 8, 6. Okay, here it goes. So, so far, I have 100 equals 2. Hey, I could probably even do the math of 169 plus 121. That's 200 and... 90, I think, 290. Don't worry, I have students that will tell me if I'm wrong. 260, 270, 280, and that adds up to 10, 290. Minus, what did I get over there? I already forgot. I got 286. Minus the 286 cosine of x. Now, how do I solve that for x? Well, I gotta get rid of I gotta get rid of this number and I gotta get rid of this number. The first number I get rid of is the 290, because it's it's uh being added to the right hand side, so I want to get rid of it. you you it's okay if you did your calculator and you said one hundred 
minus uh, 290 is a negative 190 M equals to a negative 286 cosine of x. My next step, get rid of the number that's being multiplied by the cosine. You always get rid of your plus and minuses first that are being added. Then you get rid of your multiplying. So I go divide with my calculator. I will divide both sides by a negative 286. Divide by negative 286. The negatives do cancel over here, and they also cancel here. So I don't know what that number is. I'm just going to write down a positive 190 over 286. I don't really care what the number is. I'm going to leave it on my, leave it on my paper. Equals to the cosine of x. So now i got to get rid of the trig function that's next to the x. Well, it's not really a trig function next to the x. I'm sorry. The x is the argument of a trig function. I need to do the inverse cosine. We did this already. I've got to inverse cosine both sides. So that gives me the inverse cosine of 190 divided by 286. Now you know why I didn't care about what that number was. I'm going to key to my calculator just that way, will be my x. And that answer will be in degrees. So when you key that in, whatever number you get would get the degree sign. Shouldn't say x degrees. x is that degrees. Because once I did the, the cosine, the inverse cosine, well, actually I do, it is x has degrees, but we'll write it like that. questions? Of course not. You're not even here. There's your... I could quit right now. I've done everything I need for you to do Law of Cosines, but since I'm having so much fun, let's move on to another... What if I messed up? Oh, I did. 10 squared. Yeah. Well, I can post some of the answers now of this lecture. Let's see. I did that page. I'll at least post those. So you can check those. Make sure you're doing them right. Make sure I was doing them right. All right. So I'll post it at the end. Another problem is given. Picture's there. Okay. And I'm looking for this angle here. This is just like the last problem. So I'm going to just set it up real quick and say to you that the side opposite of the included angle is 17. So 17 squared, did I do squared on the last problem? Wasn't sure. 17 squared must be equal to the 18 squared plus the 30 squared minus the 2 times 18 times 30 times the cosine of my missing angle, cosine of x degrees. And so there's my setup. Since I'm not, I don't have a calculator with me outside here, I'm going to do this. Check this out. You're going to love it. 17 squared will subtract the 18 squared, but also subtract the 30 squared. Because I moved both of those over to the other side, will now be equal to a negative uh, 2 times 18, times 30, times cosine of x degrees. Now I'm going to take my 17 squared minus 18 squared minus 30 squared, divide it by the negative 2, times the 18, times the 30, equals to cosine of x degrees. Do the inverse cosine on both sides. So this is my answer. X equals to the inverse cosine of 17 squared minus 18 squared minus 30 squared divided by negative uh, 2 times 18 times 30. Da-da! 
and, and aren't you amazed? And that'll be in degrees once you get this all done. That will be an angle. Degrees. Okay. Do one more. No picture? Man, I'm a, I want my money back. Angle, triangle, RST, RST. RS is 9. RS is 9. ST is 14. 14. And by the way, these are all centimeters. And RT is 6. 6. Find the measure of angle R. That's right here. So let's set this up. The most important decision right now is what number goes on the left of the equal sign. Obviously the number of the side that's across from my 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 cheese sandwich. Okay? So the angle is the sandwich. That's a cheese, I mean, and it's my bread. So so 14 squared goes there equals to the 9 squared plus the 6 squared minus the 2 times 9 times 6 times cosine of R. That's basically it right there. So 14 squared is... I think it's 156, I think. No, I can't remember now. Yeah. Uh, 166, maybe. I don't know. Why don't I just do the math? 14 times 14, 16. Carry the 1. That's a 4. Then 1 times 4 is 4 goes here. And one, 186. I guess I was wrong the whole time. 186. 16, 4, 4, what do I think it's not, why do I think it's 196, 14 times 14, 196, oh yeah, 5, there it is, 196, okay, my mind was playing tricks, 196 equals to the 81, plus the 36 minus 2 times 9 times 6 is 18 times 6. So let me do that math like I was a winner before. 18 times 6, 48, 10, 108, minus 108 cosine of angle R. So what would I be king in my calculator? So far... I've got 196. I'm going to take away the 81, take away the 36. That moves these two things over. Will equal to the negative 108 cosine of R. Now I'll divide both sides by the negative 108. So I've got 196 minus 81 minus 36 divided by negative 108 equals to the cosine of angle R. Do the inverse cosine of both sides. So... R is equal to the arc cosine of 196 minus 81 minus 36 divided by a negative 108 degrees. Un pedazo de pastel. I can see. All right. Applications. Those are always fun. Okay. I had to go in the house. I was cold. It's cold outside. Uh, let's see. Do we want to do two ships leaving at a port? One going north and another going uh, east. Or do we want to do two figure skaters? They're skating 
in the same location. They both have different bearings, just like the boats. Or do we want to see a helicopter, spots two, landing patrols below, pads below, straight line distances? Huh, which one do I want to do? Helicopter, figure skaters, or ships? Let me jump to the, let me do the helicopters. I like helicopters, they're cool. So, got to draw a picture. There's no way you could do either, any of these pictures, any of these problems, if you don't set up a picture. No picture, no credit. I know you didn't really do it, okay? So you have a helicopter, and it spots two landing pads below. So, let's see. I know you love my artwork, okay? I'm told all the time that... Uh, you love my artwork. Actually, I'm lying. Most of you do not like my artwork. But for all practical purposes, here is the helicopter. And it spots uh, two pads below. Let's see, how do I draw those landing pads? The straight line distances from the helicopter to the iPad is 14 to iPads is 14 miles to landing pad A. So I'm just going to go and draw. Here's landing pad A, and it's 14 miles. Miles. And 8 miles to landing pad B. So 8 miles to landing pad B. Notice how I made the 8 smaller than the 14. Wow. Did I have to do that? No. Pictures are never to scale. If the landing pads are 20 miles apart, so that was 8 miles here. So somehow I got to say, well, then this landing is, is 20 miles apart. So there's my picture. And find the angle of depression from the helicopter to landing pad B. Well, we haven't looked at angles of depression in a long time. Let me remind you what angle of depression would have been. I'm going to draw a straight line with this helicopter. There's that straight line horizontally, and someone is looking down, down at landing pad. That's the angle they're talking about right here. And they said, uh, find the angle of depression. Well, goodness gracious, that angle is not even in the triangle. How am I going to find it? Well, you have to use your imagination and realize that these two lines would have to be considered as parallel, okay? So had I read the whole problem first, I would have drawn uh, landing pad A and B. I'd have drawn them together. Then I would have drawn, uh, how long was that one, 14? I would have drawn 14. Then I would have drawn 8. Is that what it was? And then there's my helicopter right up here. So that's my picture. So y you could use your imagination that these two are parallel. Well, what does that imply? This is theta of the angle of depression, looking down, same as I have here. Two parallel lines cut by a transversal. There's my transversal. Alternate interior angles are always the same. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for angle B. If I call the, that the corner is B. Still, piece of cake, guys. Piece of cake. Let's set this up. If this is my angle that I'm looking for, this is the side across the street from it, and it's 14. Then I'm going to set up 
14 squared must be equal to the 20 squared plus the 8 squared minus the 2 times 20 times the 8 cosine of angle B. So chew on that. And so we did 14 squared earlier, so I remember that was 196. 20 times 20 is 400. 8 times 8 was 64. Minus 2 times 20 is 40. 40 times 8 is 320. Cosine of B. So just setting it up for you. And you don't have to set it up the way I do it. I'm just showing off, showing you how smart I am. I know that cosine of B will be equal to 196 minus 400 minus 64, all divided by a negative 320. So then B must be the arc cosine or the inverse cosine of 196 minus 400. Was it? Yeah, 20, yeah. I forgot, I forgot. Minus 64 divided by the negative 320. Let me double check my thought process up there. Yeah, 4 times 8 was 32 with a 0. Yeah, four, 320. So I think that will be the answer. Do I want to do one more for the road? If I do one more, then you're required to do the other to get your full credit for the lecture notes. You have to do eight. You do the figure skaters. I don't want to. Let me do two ships leaving a port. And we have two ships, ship A, ship B. Ship A goes north. Actually, north 68 degrees east. Northeast, so basically it's northeast, so... Here I have ship A going to go northeast. That'd be like this direction right here. Okay? North to the east. This is north and then to the east. Oh, that's west. I'm, I, I, good thing I paid a, I wasn't. Northeast would be this way. I'm so glad I caught it before you guys told me. And see, how far did I go? Well, he said it was northeast 68 degrees. So what that means is, as you head north, this angle here is 68 degrees. And he's traveling a speed of 17 miles per hour. If I'm doing 17 miles per hour, and it says... I left at 8 a.m. And I'm going to go all the way to 2 p.m. Or, yeah, 2 p.m. So how many hours is that? Uh, it's going to be 8 a.m., 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 5 hours. So that distance that this boat made was 17 times 5. That's uh, 85 miles. So I can label this side right now as 85. I think I'm, I think I'm accurate. Now I'm going to do ship B. Now ship B is going at a bearing of south with an angle of 33 degrees to the east. So ship B... I, where am I going to put sh ship B? It doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, 
I, back to my north, south, north, south. Did I do my math right? 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. It's 6 hours. Sorry, guys. 6 hours. 17 times 6. That would be 42. 102 miles. Sorry, guys. 102. I'm glad I caught it before somebody yells at me. 102 miles. I bet you. Want to help me do the math? So I remember these two ships, uh, they're leaving a port. So they're leaving at the same port. So ship B is going to go south and then 35 degrees east. So south. For him, he's going to go this way. And that's going to be, uh, what angle was it? Oh, it was, uh, 35. 35 degrees. And he's traveling the same distance from, uh, from 8 to 2 p.m., 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and his speed is 12. So 12 times 6, 72. So he's traveling 72 miles. We want to know how far apart will these boats be. Okay, there's my triangle. Kind of confusing because we, this is an application and uh, we're not, we didn't really spend any time doing nautical uh, or navigation, we didn't really do any of that. It gets kind of confusing to think about you're, you're going north, and then I'm going to go east. I'm going south, then I'm going east. So it all makes sense. The problem is now uh, I'm missing some information. If I'm looking for this distance here, I don't know what to call it because we don't really have any labels of those ports or anything. I'll just call that the A side that I'm looking for. I, I need to, some information about the angle A. And, oh my gosh, i got to use my geometry. I know for a fact that the 68 plus this angle A plus this uh, 35 has to add up to a straight line. It's a straight line. It's 180 degrees. So you need to take some time out of your life and say uh, 180 degrees is a straight line minus the other two angles, which were 68 and 35, minus 68, minus 35. And if we were in the class, I know somebody would give me the answer. 180 degrees minus, well, maybe not give me the answer, 98 103, and if I'm wrong, oh well, just fix it. 180 minus 103 would be 77 degrees. So what does that mean? The included angle is 77 degrees, if I did the math right. I'll let somebody check it. But now I have everything I need. I have everything. So maybe just a simple picture to make it easy to see what's happening. 77. One side was 68. No, I'm sorry, miles. How long was that? that I did the math wrong, remember? Was, I did the math, it was 102, wasn't it? 102. 102. And the other distance was 72, was it? 
12 times 6 was 72. So there it is, 72. And I'm looking for A right here. Okay, it took long enough just to draw the picture, but that's fine. Nothing in life that's worth anything is going to be easy. Love was not easy, and it's worth a lot. It takes a lot of work. And money doesn't come easy unless you're a bank robber. But then you're going to go to jail. 102 squared plus 72 squared minus 2 times 102 times 72 times cosine of 77 degrees. All right, this is just like our first problem of the day that we did because we're just finding that side. So A will be the square root of 102 squared plus 72 squared. It's a weird squared. Minus uh, 2 times 102 times 72. Let me do the 2 times 72. That's a 144. Times 102 cosine of 77 degrees. You key it in, and you have the answer in terms of miles. Please finish that. Put the answers. And uh, you have to do this one application. Your assignment, uh, I'll put it right. Let me add a page here. And... I might might have missed one, might have got one wrong. If I get one wrong, it's okay. So let me post those answers to you double check. Okay, you should have some solutions to look at to make sure that we were doing it right. Again, turn in your lecture notes and do the homework and bring it back to class next time. Is all of both pages, two pages. So there's six on that side. Sup? And uh, I'll send you a copy uh, of the uh, of the of the notes. I'll send it tomorrow after B day gets to work on it. And if if you stay tuned, I'm going to post the answers from. And there's seven on that three. There's five on that side. All, both pages, all work shown. You will turn in your lecture notes to...